Um, all right, so sensor is becoming essential component of our everyday life. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about the security of sensors or how to hack those sensors. Sensor is an electrical device to measure physical properties of surrounding environment. Sensors are divided into passive sensors and active sensors. Passive sensor um, measures environment in itself. Passive infrared sen sensors, uh, magnetometers, gyroscope, and, and accelerometers are good examples of passive sensors. Active sensors, on the other hand, emit a signal and measure environment using a return signal. Active infrared range sensors, radars, and sonars are good examples of active sensors. Sensor has been used in many IoT devices, especially for sensing and actuation system. For, for example, gyroscope is used for uh, balancing the drones. Uh, radar has been used to measure the distance in the self-driving cars. Glucose sensor has been used in insulin pump. Because sensor has been used in many, many safety critical systems, failures in sensors can cause serious problems. Do you recognize this figure happened on May 7th, 2016? Yeah? Yes, this was the Tesla incident. What happened in this incident? Tesla claimed that the camera sensors failed to recognize a side of a huge trailer. A side of a huge trailer. Yes, this was an accident. What happens if a malicious adversary can cause this kind of failure intentionally? In the rest of this talk, I'm going to talk about how a malicious adversary can fail those sensors intentionally. In the previous three talks, you have seen that there are many, many problems in IoT. Uh, network attacks and software vulnerabilities can cause a lot of problems and serious incidents in the IoT devices. However, at least we know how to do, handle those problems. And also, uh, we, uh, we know what kind of detection and prevention mechanism exist. However, IoT devices blindly trust sensing inputs, and there, therefore, uh, there is no good defense against the sensing inputs. Oops. Let's think about the attack vectors of sensors. Um, sensors have to be sensitive to legitimate physical quantities. Therefore, if we understand the detailed mechanism behind the design of sensors, one may launch a spoofing attack on this legitimate channel, calling a spoofing attack. And also, sensor, on the other hand, sensor has to be insensitive to other physical quantities it is not det uh, designed to detect. We call it side channel attack on non legitimate channel. Also, sensor has to deliver uh, information to embedded systems. If we can overwrite the uh, wire between, between the sensor and the embedded system, one can launch side channel attack as well. The first, first attack I'd like to mention is the spoofing attack on the legitimate channel. In the following video, you're going to see, I'm going to show you a demo of heartbeat sensor counting number of heartbeats. And we can show that using green laser pointer, we can spoof the number of heartbeats. Attacker sets the number of heartbeats to 100 bits per minute. Do you recognize a green laser pointer behind? Yeah? Let's see. All right, 100 bits per minute. Surprising? This is because this herpes sensor is designed to uh, detect the movement on your wrist using green laser. By turning green laser pointer on and off 100 times per minute, you can spoof it easily. If, it, if this does not look serious, then let's look at the next example. Next target is medical infusion pump with a drop sensor. In general, drop sensor, uh, in general, infusion pump uh, controls the uh, infused volume using peristaltic fingers. However, to improve accuracy, people recommend to use a drop sensor. 
drop sensor consists of IR emitter and IR receiver. IR emitter continuously sends infrared signal to the receiver. When there's a drop, the light is scattered and there will be a voltage drop in the IR receiver. So, so and uh, yeah, I, there will be voltage drop in the IR receiver. How can an uh, attacker uh, make the receiver believe that there is no drop? One thing that makes this attack difficult is because the light cannot be canceled. The attack can be done using sensor saturation. Usually, sensors have its operating region. In the operating region, input changes linearly, uh, output changes linearly with the input change. However, what happens if the receiver is saturated, or if, it, if the receiver receives more than, uh, more physical quantities than it can handle? Then it, it behaves in a nonlinear fashion. Let's see what happens if, if the receiver is saturated in real environment. So let's turn on the infusion pump. The rate is set to be 40 milliliter per hour. And this is the drop sensor. And when, when there's a drop, LED blinks. Let's look at the oscilloscope. You will see voltage drop in the oscilloscope. And please remember that graph stays in the middle of the screen. Now let's turn on the red laser pointer. Do you see the water drops faster now? Let's see what happens in the oscilloscope. Please, please. Yep. The graph shifted upwards, and it does not detect any drop because the receiver is saturated. All right, so if the receiver is saturated, then, then we may be able to generate over-infusion. How can we generate over-infusion and under-infusion? Uh, let's look at the figure. The blue line is the output of the sensor, and the red line is the output of the MCU. To generate over-infusion, uh, and the left graph is for the over-infusion, and the right graph is for the under-infusion. To generate over-infusion, what we have to do is we just have to saturate the output. If, if we saturate the output, then it does not detect any drop, and basically, um, because it does not detect any drop, it tries to push more, more drops as much as possible. That, by that way, you can generate over-infusion. To generate under-infusion, what we have to do is we first saturate the output, and then turn it off occasionally. By doing that, we can generate the fake drops and by doing that, we can actually generate under-infusion as well. Oops. And this is a setting we use. Uh, we use very cheap IR laser, and also we use measuring cylinder for the measuring the amount. Here's a demo for over-infusion. Left one is without spoofing, and the right one is the with spoofing. And we set the target volume, um, the rate to be 60 milliliters per hour, and we run it for 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, we are expecting 10 milliliters. So after 10 minutes, almost done. So the, the spoofed one has now 20 milliliters. This means that actually by using saturation, we over-infuse by 100%. Let's look at the under-infusion. Again, we set it for 60 milliliter per hour, and the target volume is set to be 10 milliliter. And we're going to run it for another 10 minutes. All right, LED blinks. The infusion is over. The cylinder has only 5.5 milliliter, while the monitor shows 10 milliliter. So we underinfuse by 45%. Defense for sensor hacking or sensor security can be simple if you understand the mechanism behind the design of the sensor and also the attack itself. How do we prevent this kind of sensor situation attack? Anybody? Yes. <laughs> 
can use black masking tape like this, <laughs> right? But note that this kind of attack does not work always because some of the receiver has to be exposed outside, for example, radar. The next attack is a um, side channel attack on knowledge to me channel. Note that the sensor should not be sensitive uh, should not be sensitive to other physical quantities it is not supposed to detect. In this example, we're gonna talk about drones. Oops. Drone has a flight controller, which is like a brain. Rotor speed of the drone is controlled by the user controller. Another factor that determines the speed of the drone, sp speed of the rotors, is the actual input from the sensors. Drone has gyroscope and accelerometers that determines the posture and direction of the drone. From now on, we're gonna focus on the gyroscope more carefully. Gyroscope is a part of IMU, which is a device to measure velocity, orientation, and rotation. Conceptually, gyroscope has a sensing mass that measures movement in X, Y, and Z axis. Typically, gyroscope is implemented in MEMS technology, microelectromechanical uh, micro structure. It is well known that mechanical structure has resonant frequency. For, uh, for in input with a specific frequency, the, the sensor, the mechanical structure can resonate. So this is an example of resonation. Because we knew that gyroscope has you know, resonant, uh, resonant frequency, we decided to measure in an anechoic chamber. So we, test, we checked a total of 15 MEMS gyroscope, and out of that, we found resonant frequency in seven MEMS gyroscope. Gyroscope from the STMicro has resonant frequency in audible range and also in all axis. However, Gyroscope from the InvenSense has resonant frequency only in x-axis and also in inaudible ranges. Let's test this against the drones. So in the next, next demo, we're gonna have a small demo for drones with a sound. So there will be no attack on 10 seconds and we're gonna play sound for next 10 seconds and we're gonna turn off the sound in the, the last 10 seconds. So this is a normal flight. And you're gonna see the same demo after my talk. And when you play sound, it cannot fly again. The student tries to control, but it fails. After we turn up the sound, it can fly, fly again. So what happens in the experiment? The left figure shows the actual output from the gyroscope. When there is no sound, the gyroscope output in X, Y, and Z axis are relatively quiet. But as soon as we start playing sound, the gyroscope shows uh, resonation clearly. And after we turn up the sound, the, um, the gyroscope output becomes quiet. How about the speed of rotors? As soon as we start, uh, start playing sound, the rotor speed hits maximum and minimum. This is because of the control algorithm for gyroscope called PID algorithm. The, when you look at the PID algorithm, the, the rotor speed depends on the difference between the previous and the current output of the gyroscope. Because the gyroscope output resonates, it has to hit the maximum and minimum. Uh, maximum minimum. So in the previous example, we attach a speaker for convenience. But how to, how to launch this kind of attack remotely? Probably we need some kind of sonic cannon like this. But because we are you know, poor academia, we decide to drop, uh, design a small um, 
directional speaker using nine directional antennas uh, and nine, nine small speakers forming a speaker array. Almost dropped it. No. The aiming is not that easy with this kind of you know, sound going like this. So the last attack I'd like to mention is the side channel attack between the sensor and the embedded system using the wire. This is a typical circuit for sensing and actuation system. Analog sensor measures the physical quantities, uh, physical quantities. Output from the sensor is converted, uh, sent to amplifier, which is then digitized through the ADC. Output of the digital output of the ADC is converted to uh, transfer to a microprocessor. In this example, we're going to use a theory what we learned from the sophomore class in the electrical engineering department. The theory says if we know the length of the wire and also the wavelength of the uh, external signal satisfy a certain condition, then the wire can be used as an antenna and we may inject a signal to the wire. Suppose we can do that. Assume we can do that. Then if the sensing input, the sensing output is the red line and the external output is the blue line, and when these two signals combine, the resulting graph looks like this. Depending on how ADC handles and depending on how, how microprocessor handles, this may be used as a spoofing output. We apply this idea against the cardiac implantable devices like pacemakers and uh, pacemakers and defibrillators. Because it is well known that uh, EMI may affect uh, operation of the medical implantable devices, one may ask if, the, if an FDA requirement must prevent this kind of attack. Let's look at the figure. The operating frequency of the uh, infusion pump, uh, uh, not infusion pump, medical implantable devices lies between zero and 10 kilohertz. EMI from our daily lives, such as microwaves or uh, power outlets are mostly higher than 10 kilohertz. So most of the medical, uh, medical implantable devices use low-pass filter, filter out uh, EMIs from the daily labs easily. However, if we can inject signal in this frequency, what would happen? The malicious signal will look like a real thing. So in this case, uh, when you look at the the lead of the uh, cardiac implantable devices, about two centimeters of the wire is uh, exposed, and we use this two centimeter as an antenna to inject healthy or sick person's waveform uh, to this device. Uh, here's the result from our experiment. Um, in the open air experiment, we successfully injected the healthy person's or sick person's waveform to uh, manipulate the uh, uh, medical devices easily. However, when we tested this idea again uh, inside the cell bath, which approximates human body, actually the attack distance is significantly shortened. In other words, actually human body itself can be a good defense against this kind of attack. After the onset of EMI signal, you can clearly see ventricular sense and the fibrillation sense as well. And the graph also shows a defibrillation shock as well. Today, I presented three attack vectors of sensor spoofing attack. Uh, spoofing attack on legitimate channel, side channel attack on non legitimate channel, and side channel attack on the wire between the sensor and the embedded system. Sensing is one of the most important components of IoT systems, such as driverless cars, drones, medical devices, and SCADA systems. However, sensor security has been out of concern so far. Today, I show that it should not be. Sensor security research is difficult because the mechanism behind the sensors are really, really diverse. 
Some of the sensors are electrical, so, so physical, mechanical, and chemical, sens chemical sensors exist. Therefore, the attacks on each sensor is also diverse, and the defense against each of the mechanism attack is also diverse as well. I believe now is the time to look at the security of sensors. Thank you very much. And my student is going to show a live demo of the drone experiment from now on. Thank you very much. Okay, now. Oh, oops. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>